Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to come together and hear and learn of the word of truth that is given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Joshua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast and given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if we do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that we do not believe. In this state, we should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that we do get, whether it be a gift of tongues or a gift of prophecy or any supernatural experience that we may have, it can and it will be used against us in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, um, and the saints that are watching in, but no peace to the wicked. And the only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. Let's, uh, and happy day of atonement. Um, Let's open up to uh, Leviticus chapter 23. It's Leviticus chapter 23, verse 26. Let me try to shoot through the getting started a little late. Right? That's that black boy. Look at him. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, also on the tenth day of this seventh month. So last week we talked a little bit about the day of trumpets, right? That was on the first day of the month, right? The first day of our seventh month. Then he told us to count ten days. He said on the tenth day of the seventh month, what happens? There shall be a day of atonement. He said this is going to be the day of atonement. It shall be a holy convocation unto you, and ye shall afflict your souls, and offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. All right, when the book say afflict your souls, it's talking about fasting. It says this is a day that we would fast. He says a holy convocation would mean it's a sacred assembly. And he said we should afflict our souls. And what else he say? Ye shall do no work in that same day, for it is a day of atonement, and to make an atonement for you before the Lord your God. Uh-huh. For whatsoever soul it be that shall not be afflicted in that same day, he shall be cut off from among his people. Mm-hmm. And whatsoever soul it be that does any work in that same day, the same soul will I destroy from among his people. Mm -hmm. Ye shall do no manner of work. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generations and all your dwellings. It shall be unto you a Sabbath of rest, and ye shall afflict your souls. In the ninth day of the month at even, from even unto even, shall ye celebrate your Sabbath. All right. So he said on the ninth day of the month, you wait until that thing just over, and at even... To the next even, you will celebrate your Sabbath. So we should fast from the even, in terms of like right now, till the next day. All right? And we afflict our souls. We, we put it on. And what it represents for us is it represents the, the, uh, the day that the Most High God set aside for us to be, to be brought back, to be forgiven. All right? Um, from the shame of our sins. So we afflict ourselves for that reason. Let's go to Romans chapter 6. Talk a little bit about uh, sin. It's Romans chapter 6. Let's start off at verse 12. We'll try to shoot through it. You sure we're making a whole lot of noise. Handsome self. Your cow lady. Reason all the way to the back of your darn head. Don't be ashamed of yourself. It's your mama fault. It's Romans chapter 6, verse 12. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Right? In other words, we got to turn away from sin. He said don't let it reign. In other words, don't let it have rule. Don't let it, don't let it have the control in your body. All right? Temptations are going to happen. All right? Even the book tells us that. You're going to be tempted to think and do and, and feel some crazy stuff. But the book come down to... What do you do, right? We have a list of things that are sin, and we have to make sure that any temptation doesn't bring us to the point of sin, right? So when the temptation is coming, that just means that, yeah, sin is there, right? But does it have reign? Does it have rule? Is it directing your movements, your thoughts, right? We have to be in a position where it doesn't direct us, right, where sin doesn't have the reign. Keep going. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, 
but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Uh huh. For sin, for sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. Uh huh. What then shall we sin because we are not under law, but under grace? All right. God so forbid. the law, the law, next logical question: You tell a person, you're not under the law, you're under grace. So therefore, sin uh -huh. don't have any rule over you. Next logical question is: Well, since I'm under grace. And I understand grace to mean that, you know, if I sin, I'm still all right, then, then shouldn't I just sin away? Right? And that's what he asked, right? Ask the question again. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law but under grace? God forbid. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourself servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether... Uh, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. All right, so you become a servant to whatever you obey. If you obey sin, you become a servant to sin. You become a slave to sin. You become bound to sin. You become in debt to sin. That's what a servant is, right? When we had servants in our land, it wasn't, it wasn't like what, what these people did to us. When we think of slaves, when we think of... I was talking to, um, I was talking to a brother. He made a post, and he, he asked a question. He was like, somebody explain, what was it, First Peter 2? He's like somebody explained First Peter two when he's talking about you know that the servant needs to obey the master and all that. Cause you know these people they look at it like see Christianity promoted slavery. You know what I'm saying? Christianity they you know what I'm saying white man put the the Bible together just to put put black people as slaves. So that's what they think. So you know I just sat around let a few people answer it and I told them I was like honestly if ain't can't nobody open this thing up for you you need a better diversity of friends. You know what I'm saying? If all you got is people telling you Bible fake and white man and da 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 you just need to, you know what i'm saying you just need to you know diversify your friends a little more because uh they're gonna they're gonna set you up for failure and so you know what i'm saying so i waited you know what i'm saying they still ain't say nothing so i came and i tried to open it up for them um just to let them know that the idea of slavery and servitude in the bible is so different from what we've learned through the hit through our history in this country right when we talk about servitude the book when the bible is talking about a servant you have to also take into account that it also told you you got to let your servant go after seven years, right? That's, that's, that's just book, you know what I'm saying? It also told you that if you have a woman servant that you treat her just like a wife, you got to take care of her, right? And you can't, you can't, even if you went and got yours, you have a woman servant, right? And then you go and get you another, a wife, you can't stop. You can't just let her go and just be like, oh, you going about your business. Now, she yours for the rest of your life, just as if you married. You got to keep paying her, Right? Like, that was our book. Our book set up protection against a servant. If a servant escaped, and I got a servant, he run the tea house, what can T say? Where you want to go? Servant got the, if a servant walk in, he escaped from me, right? I legally have a servant. The law say I can have a servant. Give me rules on how to have a servant. But if my servant, for whatever reason, is like, man, I don't want to be a servant no more, and he run and he go, you would think that's against the law, Let's stone this servant. That's what these people run through their mind because that's what happened to us. In our law, it say if this servant run away, wherever he go, you got to give him a place to live. And he can stay wherever he want to stay. He walk into town, I want to live with you. And you ain't got no choice. According to our law, you ain't got no choice. You just put up a bed for him. All right, you can sleep right here on the couch. You know what I'm saying? What are you going to do? That's law for us. Right? So when, when the book talks about a servant, it's different from what these people are thinking about, right? It's just a different economic structure that we had, right? We didn't have companies and CEOs that could just hire people and hire a bunch of people and fire a bunch of people. Everybody worked in their own land. If I'm a person and I didn't have my own stuff, how do I eat? If I don't have a land that I can till, how do I eat? I have to go buy it. So if I don't have any money to go buy some food and I don't have my own land, I have to work for somebody. Can I help you in your land? At that point, I'm a servant. We just call them employees now. And instead of it being a person-to-person -person transaction, it's an entity-to-person transaction. So, so Walmart is the, the, the company that's giving this person a job. And we call them employees. Right? But it's no different. What do you, what, I mean... If I'm on the phone and I answer the phone for Sprint, what's my job title? Customer service. So if, it, if I'm working in a customer service position, that makes me a customer servant. It's no different, 
right? But what we've done, we've taken ourselves away from reality so much because culture, our culture now, it, 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 it tries to sell things to us. It tries to soften things for us. Nobody wants to be called a service, a servant. So let's call them employees, right? Human resources. It sounds pretty, right? But think about what it's saying. It's saying humans are resources. That's it. Like it's, it's, It sounds pretty, but when you break down a lot of the stuff that we have, it's the same thing that it's always been. It's just the structure is a bit different. Instead of it being T saying, hey, you can be my servant and you can stay in my house because you don't have one. And as long as you're here, when I cook breakfast, I'm cooking breakfast for you too now. Right? It's not a situation where I'm feeding you slop outside. That's how these people do it because they're wicked. These people was wicked when they came over here. The world ain't never seen no stuff like that until these Muslims start doing it, until these, uh, these uh, Christians that brought us over here start doing it. We ain't never seen no wicked servitude like that. So that's how we base it because that's our history. We look at it, we like, that's, that's, that's a servant. Right? But in reality, a servant in the past came from a debt, even here. Right? You ever heard, you ever heard, uh, you ever getting like, you know what I'm saying, get into a deep slavery type conversation? You have a white person say white people are slaves too. You ever heard that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. White people are slaves. It was different too. for them though. Especially an Irish person. Yeah. Irish person they say we got brought here slaves too, which is true. Irish people got brought here slaves. Do you think they got brought here slaves because they were captive? Somebody went over there, they didn't see them as an equal, didn't see them as a human, and they they whooped them on the back and they brought them over here. No, they had they had rights. They were they just had in debt. Rights. They were just in debt. They were in debt. They worked the field. They were in England. They were sitting there. Where did they come from? England or Britain? Britain. Ireland? I don't know. Well, no, I'm talking about the, the wherever these people they came, came from. from. The, when they, they was on from, the darn Mayflower and the they, Santa Darn Maria. They came from England. Came like, from England. Yeah. They was over there, and they were like, we broke. We broke. I the think, people that, the, the white people, the white folks that came over here, what you think? They had the high class citizens? No. Nah. No. Nah. They had like, get the, get the scum, on the, let the scum go over there. They got their butt over there. The ones that didn't have money, and the ones that didn't have, the ones that didn't have a lot of money, would take the ones that didn't have any money and be like, you're going to be my servers. Or you're you going to be my servant when we go over there. So that's how you get some of the Irish people and other people that, that were servants or slaves when they get over here, as they would call it. They were servants. They were, they were, it was indentured servitude is what they called it because I was in debt. I owed money. Since I owe you money, I'm coming over here. I work off my debt. And then I get a parcel of land, or I do whatever. Yeah, and they and were so free. Now, they, they did whatever they want to. They can get their own land and do the same thing to somebody else. Ain't nothing but an investment. Yeah. Nothing but an investment. No different right now, no different from, from somebody on the stock market saying, I'm going to pay my money up front to fund your company, and you give me residuals back. The only difference is, I didn't have no money. I'm giving my work up front. And then when I get done with my work, I'm going to have me a little bit. I buy this land that's going to give me residuals. It's a retirement. It's a retirement. It's no different from what we're seeing. We didn't have that. We didn't have that. Ours is totally different. Right? So when we talk about service in the book, we're talking about, we're talking about debt. Right? A servant in the book. That's why the book is telling us right now, you are no longer in debt to sin. Right? Because it's thinking about a servant as debt. Right, so you're no longer in debt to sin. Keep going. But God be thanked that you were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Mm -hmm. Being then made free from sin, you became the servants of righteousness. Mm -hmm. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members servant to uncleanness and iniquity unto iniquity, even so now yield your members mm -hmm. servants to righteousness unto holiness. Why would you need to be a servant to righteousness? Why would you be in debt to righteousness? You got to pay that out. Right? You was in debt to sin. So if righteousness made you free to sin, the most high God made you free to sin due to your righteousness. Right? Then that means that he paid the debt. Once that debt is paid, you in debt to him. Right? So that's what we look at. We have to yield ourselves servants to righteousness. What else we got there? Or was that the end? Keep going. Servants of righteousness unto holiness. For when ye were the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. Uh huh. What fruit, what fruit had ye then in those things whereof you are now ashamed? Uh huh. For the end of those things is death. But now being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness in the end everlasting life. 
For the wages of sin is death. For the wages of sin is what? Death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Yahushua, the Messiah, our Lord. All right. So now we know if you commit sin, the paycheck is death. All right. That's what you owe. And, pay, and that's not even, you can't even call it a paycheck. That's the bill. Right. You commit sin then you owe death. You're supposed to die. So until that death happens, then it goes unpaid. That's why we talk about the Day of Atonement. Right. Because we commit sin. Right, so that means we have a debt that's unpaid. Yahushua came, he died. That was a that was that was a gesture to pay that debt, that debt. Once that debt is paid, we become in debt to him, to righteousness. Right? That's what this whole thing is all about. A lot of people kind of miss that point. When he's talking about you're not under the law and this that and other. That's only because the law has rule under you until what? Until you die. Until death. Right? After you die, the law no longer has rule. It ruled you in your natural state. So now he's saying, you're going to die, but I have paid for your death. Therefore, I can bring you back to life as long as you do what I say. Right? So now we become in debt to righteousness. We need to do what he say because that is our debtor. Right? He's the person who, who we owe, or he's our creditor, rather. He's the person who we owe. Right? Grab Daniel chapter 9 for me. This is Daniel chapter 9. Give me verse 23. A lot of times we make this stuff a lot more complicated than what it is. At the big, at this the is Daniel chapter 9, verse 23. At the beginning of thy supplications, the commandment came forth, and I came to show thee, for you are greatly beloved. Therefore, understand the matter and consider the vision. Uh huh. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy, and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins mm -hmm. and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness. To, to make what for iniquity? Reconciliation for iniquity. And to bring in everlasting righteousness. And to right. seal up the vision and prophecy. And to anoint the most holy. And to anoint the most holy. This was the, this was the plan. To reconcile for iniquity. Iniquity is sin. Keep going. Know therefore the un and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the prince, shall be seven weeks. And three score and two weeks. So now you got the, the Messiah, the prince, going to come, right? So he said no. You know what I'm saying? The Messiah Prince is going to come. And this is the time period and it's going to happen. And what else is going to happen after that? And the wall even in troublous times. And after three score and two weeks shall the Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. He said the Messiah is going to be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the Prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. And the end thereof shall be with a flood. And unto the end of the war desolations are determined. Right? So we've seen all this. We've seen the Messiah come. Right? We've seen him cut off. He died. Who did he die for? Himself? Books say not for himself. So he died for us. Therefore, he paid the debt for us. Right? Then after that, it says that the prince is going to come and he's going to make desolation. We saw all that happen. Right? We saw Rome tear, tear down our whole, our whole country. Right? Tear down all of Jerusalem. Right? Make merchandise of it. Start selling us off to people. Right? Taking us captive. Ran us off into Africa. In other places. All right? We've seen all these things happen. All right? So we know that this is tied right in with history. We are in debt to sin. That's a historical fact for us. We're in debt to sin. All right? Grab, uh, grab Romans uh, 5 for me. It's all about the reconciliation. Right. Reconciliation is just bringing things even. Right. Bringing it back to where it needs to be. All right. When I'm at work, I'm looking at I'm looking at accounts. What I have to do is I have to reconcile. Right. I have to look at this is how much is old. This is how much we believe it should be. This is how much the card member is saying it should be. This is how much is fraud. This is how much is fees. This is how much is interest. All, all these different things going on. I have to say, OK, card members purchases are right here. 
card members' payments are right here. Card members' uh, 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 potentially fraud transactions are here. Now I have to reconcile. Let's get rid of the fraud transactions, and we need to give them a credit for that. Once all that is done, the account is reconciled. It's good, right? Because it's brought to a place to balance. Same thing that's going on here. It's no different, right? Most I got looking at all oh, y'all out of balance. All oh, y'all out of balance. All oh, y'all owe. According to my law, all oh, y'all owe. All oh, y'all supposed to be dead. All this whole thing out of balance. So now he issued a credit in the form of Yahushua, right? All the accounts made reconciled after that credit. Right now, what we have to wait on is since he issued this credit, if that person doesn't react the way that he wants them to react, he can end their account or he can continue their account. He owns the account now. It's his account. When you, when you, okay, so let's say, let's say I don't pay my Cox bill this month, right? I don't pay it this month. Next month come, I don't pay it that month either. Another month come, I don't pay it that much. Either. How many how many months you think cops gonna give me before they like uh, I'm done, I'm done, right? They gonna give you like three months usually, three or four months, right? After that, they gonna have a debt on their books. And you know what they gonna want to do with that debt? They gonna want to sell it because they know that they don't want to waste any more money trying to call you, send emails to you to make payments if you haven't made a payment in four months. So you know they got other people that specialize. And getting those that that type of money, debt collectors, credit credit uh, credit collectors, right? So they sell it to that company. That company is gonna pay. Uh, what did I say? Cox. That company is gonna pay Cox to have that debt on their book because they feel like they can mark it up and they can make more money off of it. So Cox say we even debt is paid. So from Cox's point of view, you have no more debt. Matter of fact, even if you call after they sell it, you can call Cox if you want to. And guess who they're going to send you to? The company that bought it from them. Because Cox, you ain't got no business with us no more. You good. They ain't going to let you have no, no account no more either. But in terms of the, in terms of the debt, they're going to be like, no, nah, we good. You, you, know, you, you, ain't got, you ain't got no business with us. We sold this off to LV, whoever. All right? You're going to go to this other company, and you're going to talk to them. And they're going to say, now you need to pay me. Or you want it off your credit. You got to pay me. Yahushua is that debt collector, right? He looking like, listen, you didn't pay the first man. Now I'm coming around, you right? If you do what I say, I'll get it all off your credit. You'll be good. I'll wipe you clean. Your credit be clean. You do what I say. You don't do what I say, your butt going to hell. The stakes become different because the debt is, what is different. You have a different debt to a different person now, right? So the debt is different. Now that Yahushua represents our, our, our debt holder, right? Now we have different responsibility. This is Romans chapter 5. Give me verse uh, 6. But when we were yet without strength in due time, the Messiah died for the ungodly. Mm -hmm. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Mm -hmm. Yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. Mm -hmm. But God commanded his, commanded his love, commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, the Messiah died for us. He Christian love that, don't they? They do though. I Man, you you get to saying that thing. He Christian love that thing. Wow, we were yet sinners. That's because they didn't understand what we just talked about, right? They look at it as the fact that he died means I'm saved. Nah, that's not how it works. Him dying only reconciles the account. That's it. It brings the account back even. He paid it. Now you owe him. Right? You're not free. You're not scot-free. It's not like just free money being passed around. Now you owe him. All you have to do is do what he say. You do what he say, you good. You don't do what he say, your butt is going to hell. They don't believe me, though. Keep going. Everything I'm making this stuff up. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Mm -hmm. And not only so, but we also join in God through our Lord, Yahushua the Messiah, by whom we have now received the atonement. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned, for until law, 
For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses. Death reigned from Adam to Moses. Keep going. Even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who was in the figure of him that was to come. Uh huh. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Yahushua the Messiah, has abounded unto many. Mm -hmm. And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift, for the judgment was by one to condemnation. But the free gift, gift is of many offenses unto justification. All right? So this is the gift that he's given us. A way out of death. Does that mean that people don't die? No. All right? Hebrews, is, go to Hebrew, Hebrews chapter 9. All right? Hebrews will tell us that. It's not saying that people are not going to die. It's just saying that he offered us a gift. You know what else they're going to say? All right, you're talking about all this money stuff, right? You're talking about, you talking about we owe him. How is it a free gift if we owe him? Right now, if you owe money to a company, and out of nowhere, you see somebody else, and they go pay off your account, right? Your account already paid for. It's done, right? Your account's done. Pay for. Now, you don't have a service with that company anymore. You want service though. Your account was past due. Service got cut off. They paid for it, right? Your cocks is cut off. They paid your debt. It got charged off, sold to a uh, to a debt collector. You start getting the calls. They paid it off. You called them. They told you, no, nah, somebody just paid it off, right? At that point, it's even. But you still don't have what you want, right? You want service. You want to be able to watch TV, right? Right now, you're just, your account is reconciled. You're done. It's paid off by somebody. Fine. But you don't have what you want. In order to get what you want, guess who you got to talk to now? You got to talk to the person that paid it off. That's where y'all sure is. All of us want to live, right? So it's free. It was free that he paid it off or reconciled our balances. So now at this point, now that that's done, you have a choice. You can go to hell. Or you can live forever. The stakes are different now. It changes. Right? That's important for us to understand that. This is Hebrews chapter 9, just so we understand. Hebrews chapter 9, verse uh, 27. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. As it is appointed unto man once to die, after that yo but getting judged. What do you think that judgment is? When it says judgment, it's talking about Yahushua. All judgment is going to be given to him. So when it comes down to it, he's going to decide what happens to you. Dying is not, it's not the end all, right? We have to get that out of our head. Dying is not the end all. It's not the end of the world. Dying is really just the beginning, right? Once you die, then you have to meet the man in judgment. Then he decides what you're going to do for eternity. You, you either going to be burned in hell or you're going to live forever with him. Right? That's why we're here. We're here that on our dying day, we can stand justified before God. Not because we were justified always, but because Yahushua made a payment to our account and we did what Yahushua asked us to do for the rest of our life. At that point, then he can raise us up and he can grant us, grant us um, uh, life into the everlasting kingdom. That has to be what all of us want, but it's not. Right? Some of us don't want that. Some of us run our mouth, act like we want it, but some of us don't want it. Right? But that's the stakes that we deal with. That's how things change. That's how it makes sense that some people are going to go to hell and some people aren't. It's not that everybody... Everybody, it's not that nobody dies and it's not that everybody's going to heaven. That's not what factual, right? What we look at is the book is letting us know there was a debt, debt was paid, now there's a new creditor, you're going to have to pay this new man. That's it. And it's, still, and it's still a free gift. You call them what you want to call them. It's Exodus chapter 34, verse 5. He's a weirdo. All right, they look at it, it's like, man, one man, look, it's appointed to man to die. 
That's it. God has two different things that he got going on, right? He told Adam one, He told Adam something real simple. That's what we were reading in Romans 5. He told Adam something real simple. If you touch it, all right, well, he said, if you eat of it, you will surely die. That thing was real simple. So because of that, that's what Romans was talking about, that death came in through one man, right? So because of that, that's how the rest of the world go. You're going to die. That he can't, he can't change that. So the way that he worked around that, the way the most I did it, he's like, okay, I had that promise. That one's going to stay. The way I'm going to work around it, I'm going to raise you back up. Right? Once your account is fulfilled, I got to raise you back up. That's it. So he had to do that through Yahweh Shua. This, uh, this Exodus chapter 34, verse 5. And the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth, uh -huh. keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin that they may, will by no means, wait, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, and that will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity on the fathers, upon the children, upon the children's children, unto the third and to the fourth generation. And Moses made haste and bowed his head toward the earth and worshipped. He said, by no means will it clear the guilty. Right? Because the death still happens. Right? Remember, that's the wage. That's, the, that's what's due. That's the bill. Right? When you do something, then there's something else that, has, that comes. This is what you owe. Right? I go somewhere, I use a service, do whatever. I have now a bill that comes to me. The bill is death. That's just what you owe, death, right? So it doesn't clear the guilty. He said, yeah, I forgive your sins and all this, but it in no way clears the guilty. You're still going to pay the death, right? What Yahushua does is by paying that death, let's say if something gets paid twice, what does that mean? You got a credit. So if Yahushua pay the death, and then I come back and I die, that means I paid the death. Somebody got to give me life or somebody got to give Yahushua life. Right? To one of us. Because we both paid. So one of these, one of these going to have to come back to us. I make a credit card payment for $20. And I got a $20 balance. Then I make another $20 payment. One of those payments going to have to come back to me. Right? I got $20 coming back to me. If I make a payment for $20 out of my account and Tasha make a payment to my account also for $20, it got to come back to one of our accounts. Right? That's the only way to look at it. So, life is either going to come back to Yahushua, which it will if we don't obey, or the life can come back to you if we do obey. Right? It's all simple stuff. It's just that we have to look at it like the book, like the book describes it. So long we've been told and taught the Bible through lies, so it's hard for us to see it the way it's actually described. What we want to do now is look at it how it's actually described. It's just talking about transactions. It's talking about wages. It's talking about what we owe. Right? This is John chapter 5. Let's shoot through it. It's John chapter 5, verse 20. want to prove to y'all what I said earlier. It's for the, John chapter 5. For the Father loves the Son and shows him all things that himself does. That's verse 20? Yeah. Alright. And he will show him greater works than these that ye may marvel. Mm -hmm. For as the Father rises up, raises up the dead and quickens them, even so the Son quickens whom he will. Quicken it. What, what he's saying is make it alive. When, this, when the book say quicken it, then ain't talking about run fast. He said when he quickened somebody, that just means that he made them alive, right? Keep going. For the father judges no man, but has commend, committed all judgment unto the son. All right? So when the book tell you, and we just read it, it's, it's, it's appointed unto man once to die. So everybody has to die once. But after that, the judgment, who you think you're going to look at? Remember, you got one person who paid your debt, right? I paid your debt. All right, just imagine, all you have to do is just put this stuff in real terms in your mind. You can't look at the Bible like, oh, it's a nice fairy tale. Because you'll never believe it. You'll have yourself thinking you believe this stuff and you don't. 
make sure you understand it's real, right? You just put yourself in y'all's sure position. You pay somebody bill. Just pay the whole thing. You just, I mean, just a nice gesture. But then all of, all along, they went against every rule that you have, and you the person with authority. Everything that you ever ask them to do, they do it something different. Then it comes time for you to make a judgment for them, right? And they sit here trying to tell you, I'm a good person. I really do. But only thing you know is, well, I mean, I had some experience with you. And when I was with you, 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 you was a little rough. You know what I'm saying? You didn't really do. So now if, if your supervisor is telling me that you didn't obey their rules, and my experience with you is you didn't obey my rules, and after that, that was after I did something for you, right? The judgment that you would give for that person would be negative. You'd be like, oh, well, no, right? I judge against you, right? How you think y'all sure are going to go when he know everything about you, right? He pay your debt. You sin against him. Then you got to meet the man in judgment after you die, right? He going to look at you and be like, okay, you go to hell. That's how it all plays out. That's what it's talking about. All judgment is given to the man. Don't let this book trip you up. And it's, it's set here to trip up sinners. It's written in a way to trip up sinners. I'm trying to help you not let it trip you up, right? Because what, what he's given to us is for us to explain and to spread the message of the gospel. This is what it is. That grace has come into the world. What's that grace? It's a free gift. Most High God freely just paid everybody debt. What you going to do with it now? Now that you're debt free, what you going to do with it? Now that you're free to serve the Most High God, what you going to do? Are you going to put yourself back in debt? Because if so, you're going to hell. Right? Keep going. For the father judges no man, but has committed all judgment unto the son, mm -hmm. that all men should honor the son, even as they honor the father. He that honors not the son honors not the father which has sent him. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that hears my word and believes on him that sent me has everlasting life, mm -hmm. and shall not come unto condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they shall hear, and they that, that hear shall live. All right, he said the ones that hear, they're going to end up living. That's what we're looking for. For as the Father has life in himself, so has he given the Son to have life in himself. Mm -hmm. And has given him authority to execute judgment, also because he is the Son of Man. He said, given him the authority to execute the judgment, also because he is the Son of Man. That's who's going to be doing the judging. Y'all play with this man if you want, if you want to. The one that paid your debt is the same one that's going to decide what you do with for the rest of your life. Right, you would want to make sure after you pay your debt, you do something that's pleasing to him. A lot of people don't see it that way, though. A lot of people see it as, "Oh, he paid my debt. That's how I know he loved me. I can do it. He'll accept me, however I am." I think it's investment. It's, that's all it is. He's looking for something particular. He like, I look out for everybody. He's looking for something particular. Who gonna do something with it? Right? Is that not what his parables teach? Aren't all his parables a setup? Every one of them things. You just randomly sowing something into the field. For what? Oh, I don't know. To see which one actually produces fruit. All them things are set up. What's another? I'm trying to think of another parable. Just throw one out there. We, we can do it randomly. It's Give me a parable. The talent. He out hiding the talent. He gave him all the talent. Oh, yeah. You got, I mean, I got some workers in the field, right? I got workers. I, I got workers in the field. I agreed to pay them one whole talent for a full day's work, right? I come back. And I say, you know what? I need some more work. So you know, I'm three hours into the day, I give me a couple more. And guess what? I agreed to pay them a talent for three quarters of the day. You get the same amount as somebody who work a full day. Guess what? Halfway through the day, I, I need some more work. So now, for half day's work, you get the full talent that the same person get for working a full day's work. Then I come back at the latter part of the day, and it's only, a, only about an hour left of work. I'm still going to give you the full talent. Right? So he's looking at it like, well, all these different people, I just worked a full day for the full time. You better mess around and go to hell. Just, just by, by thinking that he's evil towards you, for, for uh, looking out for the other people. It's a setup. I was actually talking about the ones that 
took the talent and was supposed to double it. Oh, that's an even better one. Yeah, you're right. That's what I was talking yeah, about. That's the one that, yeah, that one's even better, right? That's exactly what this is, right? You look at it. He invests. He says, listen, I got to go away. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to keep my money with all y'all. I'm going to get you, get you, get you, and get you. He said, this man this is one man, right? One man, he, instead of, instead of, um, instead of uh, investing it like some of his other brothers did, you know what I'm saying? What did he end up doing? He, he hit it he, in the ground. Yeah, he hit it in the ground. He said, you could at least, you know what I'm saying? Bank. You could at least put that thing, got a little bit of usury on it. Put it in the bank, savings or something. You know what I'm saying? You could at least got a little bit of interest on it if you did that. He said, oh, man, but all you did, dug it in the ground. Because you said, I'm a hard man. Right? He said, man, my master's a hard man. If I lose this, he going to get me. Most like God looking for you to profit. He ain't looking for you to stay even. It's all about profit. It's all about growth. Right? When, it, when we go back to the parable of sword and seed, it was a bunch of, it was a bunch of, bunch of seeds to get thrown. Which one was he looking at? The wheat and the tear. The ones, or not the wheat and the tear, but the ones that, the ones that said it came back 30, 60, and a hundredfold. A hundredfold, that means times, right? That's a hundred times better. Right? He said he look the man is looking for profit. He's not looking for he's looking for that thing. The man's a capitalist. Right? He's okay. He's looking like, look, what's the bet? I need a return on my investment. And y'all gonna play with this man. This is his parables. I didn't make this stuff up. I didn't make this stuff up. We can go through whatever parable y'all want to. It's gonna set, it's gonna show up. He's going to take a situation for the mass majority of them, and it's going to be a setup for the people. Right? And it's only the ones who produce and get what he wants, the result that he wants, that's the ones that's going to make it. I don't know how people get in their mind that God don't care what they do. It's nothing in the book that tells you. It's nothing in the book that gives you that message. Everything, if you honestly look at it, is he absolutely cares what you do. He's, he's, he's hell-bent, literally, on what you do. That's what the whole book is about. He gives you scenario after scenario that's all about what you do. And somehow we get out of it, it don't matter. It's a complete delusion. Just a complete, and it's dangerous for us. Because we live life and we go through and we get to, our, to, our, to the end of it. And we have this comfortability that's not from God. And we're not even concerned about our souls anymore. Man, it's a blessing for a person to be concerned about their soul. It's a blessing for a person just, oh, I want to get it right. I got to get it right. I got to do it different. I've been doing it with, it just don't feel right. That's a blessing to have that feeling. A lot of these people just don't got it. A lot of people just walking around, it's just, it just not there. It just, we, have to, we have to glory to God and praise God and remember to thank God just for the simple fact that we have a mind, right? A mind to even think about the man. There's so many people out here that's not. But going right to hell if the most high God don't get their attention. All right? What we got? Keep going. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in the which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice and shall come forth. They that have done good unto, re unto the resurrection of life, uh -huh. and they that have done evil unto the re resurrection of damnation. No, notice that it's a resurrection, though. It's a resurrection of life. And the resurrection of damnation. Right? It's important that we understand that. Look, without, without the Messiah, without what he did, there wouldn't be no resurrection. It wouldn't be either one. You just have death. Right? You're better be dead. That's all, that's all we're talking about. It's just you die. The only reason there's a resurrection is because he owned your account. After he paid off all your debt, it's like, okay, well, I own it. Now I have some authority. Now I can tell you, you can go this way or you can go that way. Right? He owns it. Without him owning it, without him making that payment, there wouldn't be, it would just be everybody die. You good, you die. You bad, give me Ecclesiastes. This is Ecclesiastes chapter 9. What we're about to read is going to be from the point of view of a man, Solomon, right? Of a man who didn't, who didn't understand the Messiah. Didn't understand what the Messiah was going to do. Didn't understand how this thing was going to play out. He knew one thing, though. But a lot of people like try to go to him to like try to prove that there is no resurrection or something like that. You know what I'm saying? But they don't understand that he didn't know. You know he didn't have that information back then. To whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Exactly. 
How he gonna know? That don't make no darn sense. He just pop up and just knew. Book already told us that the prophets was looking and searching which way and how these things were gonna happen. He, they get a little nugget. They like, that's gonna happen? How in the world he gonna put that thing together? Solomon didn't know Solomon trying to figure that thing out. He's looking and struggling with that thing yeah, too. Was, if you read his book, he can tell you, you know, that was vexing to him. He, just, he didn't know. <laughs> he said, man, a bunch of books, man. I'm gonna tell you something. He said, man, listen, I don't know. He's like, huh? All I can tell you is keep the commandments. <laughs> he goes through a whole, a whole book. What is it, 12 chapters? Whole book just right at the end of it. He's just like, look, man, only thing I can tell you, bro, <laughs> just keep the commandments. After you know what I'm saying? After everything I told you, <laughs> just, just make keep sure the you, make it's sure all vanity. You, you know what I'm saying? Just, just keep the commandments. That's the only thing I can tell you, man. Like, give me, uh, give me verse one. It's uh, Ecclesiastes 9.1. For all this I considered in my heart, even to declare all this, that the righteous and the wise and their work, works are in the hand of God. No man knows either love or hatred by all that is before them. Uh -huh. All things come alike to all. There is one event to the righteous and to the wicked, uh -huh. to the good and to the clean. He said there's one event to the righteous and to the wicked. He said you good, you clean, it don't matter. Keep going. And to the unclean, uh -huh. to him that sacrifices and to him that sacrifices not. Right, you, you, you do your sacrifice to God. Okay, you do your, you don't do your sacrifice to God. All right, let's see what else. And is the good, so is the sinner. As is the good, so is the sinner. Uh huh. And he that swears, as he that fears an oath. Uh huh. This is an evil among all things that are done under the sun. That there is one event unto all. He said one event unto all. What do you think of what event you think he talking about? Keep going. Yea, also the heart of the sons of men is full of evil. And madness is in their heart while they live. Mm -hmm. And after that, they go to the dead. They go to the dead. That's the one event. No matter what, he's saying, you could be good, you could be bad. There's one thing that ain't nobody going to escape. Your butt going to die. He knew that. He didn't know nothing about what's going to happen after. He didn't know about Yahushua dying and being able to resurrect people. One thing he did know for sure is all y'all butt going to die. I don't care what you do in this life. Your butt going to die. And he's absolutely right about that. Right? What we look at is we look at death being the end. It's not anymore. He can look at it that way. Right? He can look at it that way. God told me to obey the commandments. I'm going to do it. I'm going to tell y'all, y'all should too. If you don't, you're still going to die. If I do, I'm still going to die. Right? That's how he is looking at it. Right? At the end of the day, just keep the commandments. Let's hope for the best. You know what I'm saying? That, that was his message for the most part. We now know more than him. We have, we're in a position we know that once we die, Most High God just told us his son going to resurrect some stuff. Some people going to be resurrected on the life. Some people on the death. That's new information. That wasn't happening before. Right? Which means it changes the responsibility. It changes the landscape. If the man who paid your debt now has the power to decide your eternity, you might want to obey him. Just a suggestion. All right? Just a suggestion. This is Luke chapter 12. This is Luke chapter 12. What verse? Uh, give me verse 4. And I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid of them that kill the body, and after that have no more that they can do. Mm -hmm. But I will forewarn you whom you shall fear. Mm -hmm. Fear him which after he has killed has power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. I tell you, it's more than just dying. Dying is just the tip of the iceberg. He said, fear the one, not just who can kill. You better be scared of the person that can put you in hell. Grab 1 John 2. First John chapter 2. Verse 
First John chapter two, verse one. I think verse four is what I want to go. My little children, these things write I unto you that ye sin not. Oh, that's good. We started verse one. Little children, I write these things unto you that you do not sin. He don't care what you do though. Keep going. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Yahushua the Messiah, the righteous. Uh huh. And he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Whoa, 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 whoa. So I've been running my mouth this whole time telling y'all he died for everybody and he paid off everybody debt. But now we have a little bit of proof for it. He said, not for ours only, but for who? The whole world. No matter if you're righteous or a sinner, it ain't like he only died for the people that 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 do the right thing. No. Well, that's uh, let's take that back. He did only die for the people that's gonna end up doing the right thing, right? He died for the sinner so that he can own them. But that don't mean that. He didn't take the he didn't take the benefits of dying for the uh the unrighteous too, yeah. right? If he didn't die for them, he wouldn't be able to send them to hell. He said everybody got to get it now. You know what I'm saying? That thing that thing wouldn't be fair if I just die. I only pay for the people who gonna end up being righteous, right? I only pay for them, and then the rest of these people just they just die. No, that thing got a balance. If I'm a let's just see, if I'm gonna take some people. And I'm going to give them something much better because they did good. Then I got to go and get somebody else much worse. That thing got a balance on each side. You know what I'm saying? It's a God of just scales. You know what I'm saying? You can't just come and be like, ah, you know what I'm saying? Y'all stay exactly the same, but I'm going to increase y'all. No, if I increase y'all, I got to decrease y'all. Otherwise, my thing all balanced. Somebody got to get decreased if somebody getting in increased. Keep going. And hereby we do know that we know him. If we keep his commandments. If we do what? Keep his commandments. You better know the man. You better know the man. He said, you know him if you keep his commandments. Right? Who commandments? Y'all sure. It's where they mess up. What? So what's y'all sure commandment? Say not. Keep the gospel. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love the Lord thy God. Let me see. It's Matthew idols. chapter 2, 7. You know what I'm saying? Don't defile yourself. It's Matthew chapter 7, verse 20. Wherefore, by their fruit, by their fruits, you shall know them. Uh huh. Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, mm -hmm. but he that does the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say unto me in that day, Lord, Lord, we ha have we not prophesied in your name, mm -hmm. and in your name have cast out devils, and in your name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. That's good too. That was an accident. I meant to. I meant to say Mark. That thing good. You know I, what I'm saying? I, I thought you meant Mark. Yeah, I meant to say Mark. This is uh, this is Mark chapter uh, 7, verse 20. But if you look at him, he told you. He said, what was the reason why these people had to depart for them, from him and that he didn't know them? We just read. We just read. It all come together. First John just told us that if we keep his commandments, that's how we know we know him. Right? Then the man just said to people who were doing stuff in his name, he said, depart from me. I never what? I never knew you. So if he never knew you, what was his reason? You he said, you never. workers of iniquity. If you commit iniquity, that means you wasn't committing, uh, uh, doing his commandments. It all lined up. Ain't nothing like the most high God in this word. Keep going. This is uh, Mark chapter 7, verse 20. And he said, that which comes out of the man, that defiles the man. He said, what comes out of a man defiles a man. Let's hear about it. From within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries. Evil thoughts. These evil thoughts culminate in adulteries. Fornication. Fornication. Murders. 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 Thefts. Thefts. Covetousness. Covetousness. Wickedness. That's, that covered jealousy. That covered you, uh, you uh, scheming to get somebody else's stuff. Right? Wickedness. Deceit. Deceit. Lasciviousness. Lying. Right? Lasciviousness. Being lust for. Causing people to lust after you. An evil eye. An evil eye. Blasphemy. Blasphemy. Pride. Pride. Blasphemy is not just against God either. 
blasphemy against your brother. You can call, talk and blaspheme your brother too by calling him out his name and all that type of stuff, right? Pride. Foolishness. Foolishness, right? And nobody know that just being, just being darn foolish is a sin. All that stuff ain't going to make it in. Keep going. All these evil things come from within and defile the man. Mm-hmm. That's what we look at, right? It's all about love, right? It's just like brother said here. You have to love your neighbor, right? You got to love the people with the most high God. But these things defile you, right? If your love is defiled, then therefore you're not keeping this commandment. So you have to turn away from all this stuff first before you try to love anything. Right, I prove that to you, do because the man already told you. He said, "I'm happy we went to it." Matthew seven, when we read it, he already said, "Depart from me, you workers of what iniquity." Now, Rasha, this is First uh, Corinthians chapter thirteen. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. We just heard about all the things that defile a man. So let's just say I'm trying to love somebody, but I have one of those things that defile me. Technically, you know, Christian might say, technically, the Bible didn't say. I can't love while I'm doing those things. All right. First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4. Charity suffers long and is kind. What does charity mean? Love. Okay, so love suffers long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Uh-huh. Charity vaunted not itself. Is uh-huh. not puffed up. That's pride. Keep going. Does not behave itself unseemly. Mm-hmm. That's that's lasciviousness. So it said don't don't commit lasciviousness. Keep going. Seeks not her own. Mm-hmm. Is not easily provoked. Uh-huh. Thinks no evil. Thinks no evil. Rejoices not in iniquity. If what? Rejoices not in iniquity. So if you happy, I mean, let's just say you you really impressed. You happy. Good with your life right now. You content. But you a sinner? Your love is defiled. He telling what charity is, right? He telling what love is, right? One of the things he said, it rejoices not, it's not happy in iniquity. He said, rejoice is not in iniquity, right? When you a sinner, there's no way you can be happy. Not now, love. That's crazy. So that'll let you know right now, right? It disqualifies your love. That's what's required, love. But that disqualifies it, right? Hebrews chapter 10. Let me try to wrap this up. Ten verse what? Uh, Nineteen. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest, holiest by the blood of the Yahushua, by a new and living way which He has consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, His flesh, and having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our hope without wavering, for he is faithful that promise. Mm -hmm. And let us consider to one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. All right. So that's what we look at for this day of atonement. Right. Yahushua being our high priest. The book is telling us, let's approach the Holy of Holies, right? When we had our tabernacle, there was a room that was inside of the tabernacle that was considered the Holy of Holies, the most holy place, right? What we have to do is we have to be able to prepare ourselves to approach, because that's where only the high priest could go, who is Yahushua for us, right? Now he's coming out to us to atone for us, to sprinkle us clean, right? We have to be in a position where we're ready to accept that, otherwise... So what, what the priest would do is the priest would have two goats, right? They have two goats. You have one, the goat for the sacrifice, and you have one, the goat, with, which the book calls the scapegoat, right? Mm-hmm. One goat, you'll go and sacrifice it like normal. The other goat, you'll take all the sins of the people and put it on that goat, touch the goat head, the priest would, touch the goat head, and then send the goat out into the wilderness, right? When you, when you are into the forest, when that happens, it represents... The sin being put on the goat, and that goat going to hell, essentially. Right? We need to make sure that we the right goat. 
We need to make sure that the Messiah takes us on and redeems us. That we represent the, sacri the sacrifice rather than representing the sin. Right? That's what it is about us. That's what, that's what the Day of Atonement comes down to. Every year, once a year, he would atone for our sins. Right? The high priest would. Now our high priest is Yahushua. And now we won't have to do it every year. All right? We just need to approach the man. He'll make a clean one time. The only way to get there is if we obey him. And then when we obey him, we got to do it for the rest of our life. We can't take no days off. Can't take no months off. Can't say, I'm just not feeling good right now. Or I don't like the stuff that's happening in my life or whatever. We have to stay on it. We have to stay committed. And we have to inspire brothers and sisters to do the same thing. Otherwise, we risk losing ourselves. All right? It's way too much going on. It's getting way too late in the day. The atonement is here. All right? And one, of these, one of these years, one of these feasts, things going to be different. All right? We just got to make sure we're ready. All right? Otherwise, we'll mess around and we'll slip up. And, 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 and one slip could be the last slip. Yeah, no one, no more will you do according to your own way like you did in America. <laughs> Seriously. Seriously. You know what I'm saying? He said, we did, every man did it, you know what I'm saying, however he wanted to do it. You know what I'm saying? He said, no more of that. All right? Any questions? Let's go ahead and pray out.